Well, hi everyone. Today I'm excited to have Emily Wapnick. Do I say Wapnick or Wapnick? Yeah. Wapnick. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> on the podcast today. So hi, Emily. I'm glad you're here. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Emily is a multi-potentialite. Uh, now, if you haven't heard that term, she will explain it later. That's one of the questions. <laughs> uh, but uh, 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 I, I found her about page on puttylight.com, which is her blog. Uh, and uh, I just, I love what she writes. She says the only accurate label for her uh, is multi-potentialite because she's not just one thing. She follows her passions and has explored many different things. Uh, from being a serious musician and songwriter to web designer to filmmaker, writer, and uh, a law graduate. And she also became interested in entrepreneurship and started her blog, puttylike.com, where many other like-minded uh, people connect in a community who have many different passions. And uh, so, Emily, I just, I love what you're doing. I just, I, I just think there's so many people uh, that have many passions that they aren't sure what to do with them all so sometimes we we squish them down and we should be doing yeah. that right and, yeah I mean I think that our culture really encourages us to like find our thing you know it's like that myth of the one true calling and so those of us with many passions we feel like there's something wrong with it or there's something wrong with us and we have to just like deny most of them and just kind of you know focus in on on one and that that can really you know kind of crush your spirit and Yes. Um, make your life a lot less rich than it could be. Yes. No, and that's exactly right. And so, I mean, what you're doing here is so uh, awesome. It's just so needed. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, just uh, have a few questions here that I wanted sure. to ask you. So would you just, you know, just share a little of your story and how you thought yourself uh, as someone who was a multi-potentialite? And, and, and I guess, you know, my next question would be, you know, were you supported in you know, having all these passions. Yeah, so um, I, I wasn't always this comfortable with being a multi-potentialite. <laughs> it actually caused me a lot of anxiety growing up because I sort of, I'd become interested in something and I'd get all involved and I would be like, oh yes, I found my thing. And then I would hit this point where I'd start to get bored and yeah. then I'd become interested in something else and I'd be like, oh yes, I found my thing. And I'd dive in and I'd get pretty good at it, but then I would start to get bored again. So I actually, this caused me a lot of anxiety and yeah. it, it, I don't know, I just, I, I would stress out about like, what am I going to be when I grow up? I can't yeah. seem to stick with anything. Like what's wrong with me? Why can't I commit? You know, all of these sort of issues were coming up for me. Yeah. Even though like I was having a lot of fun and learning a lot of interesting things, I didn't really see it that way at the time. Yeah. Um, so a lot of that changed as I got a bit older and I started Putty Like. Yeah. And it was sort of an experiment just to see if there was anyone else out there like this. Uh, it turns out there are like many, many people like this and we all seem to think that we're alone. Yes. Because it's just the dominant culture. I mean, it, it, it really romanticizes the idea of specialization and, and we just aren't, multi-potential aids aren't really present in, in that kind of mainstream discussion. Um, even though there are some like very prominent and successful multi-potentialites like Richard Branson and Oprah yeah. Winfrey and you know, right. it, yes, yeah, people who are doing a lot of different things, but we just don't think of it that way, and we're not really taught that that is an option. Yeah, when we're growing up. Um, so yeah, so let's say I jumped around like you said from music to art and web design to I went to film school, I went to law school. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah, I've more, more recently become interested in um, kind of the sciences, health sciences, and now like um, I'm taking a woodworking class and I'm getting into like wilderness stuff. And so, yeah, I'm all over the place, but oh, now I'm great. enjoying it. Now I'm sort of embracing it and just kind of going, going with it. Yes. Oh, and that's, that's terrific. Wow, woodworking too? I just love it. I mean, it's just... <laughs> yeah, I actually, check this out. Hang on. <laughs> I just, I don't know if um, people are watching on the video, but I just made this cheese board in my oh, woodworking class. <laughs> that's excellent. Beautiful. I'm really proud of it. It's the first thing I made. Yes. Um, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so that's my story. And uh, I was pretty well supported. My parents are um, both professors and so for them like learning has inherent value yes. um, both because you know they believe in education and also because 
no matter what you're studying, it can all lead to being a professor. It doesn't really matter if it's impractical, right? So like, <laughs> I'm not a professor. I'm sure, I know my mom would love for me to be one, but that, I don't think that's going to happen. No. Um, but suffice to say, that meant that I was always encouraged. You know, they, they always kind of exposed me to different cultural things. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, they were pretty great. Um, I don't think they always totally knew what I was up to, you know, when I'd become completely obsessed with some weird thing, but they always had the attitude of, like, all right, like, if it's not dangerous, like, give it a try, you know? Yeah. Sure. Oh, uh, that's good. Yeah, they were pretty good. Not everyone is that lucky. I hear from a lot of people who did not get much support from their family and yeah. friends, and, you know, they got a lot of pressure to kind of choose something narrow, choose something practical, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's really good. And you're right. I think that is kind of lacking, <laughs> right? The but I mean, I thing. still, even with the support of my parents, I was still really anxious about this. You know, I, I still felt like there was something wrong with me, like just, just because I didn't fit into the kind of the broader culture yeah. and that story. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, but that's good that you kept trying anyway. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. So, you know, uh, so people are probably wondering, what does it mean exactly to be a multi-potentialite? <laughs> yes. Do you mind just talking about that? Sure, yeah. So a multi-potentialite uh, is someone with many interests and creative pursuits. And that can mean, um, you know, you have many different interests at one time, or you could be a bit more sequential and go through one thing and then move on to something else and then move on to something else. Uh, and then it's a spectrum. So, you know, anywhere between like having 20 things on your plate at once and having one at a time after, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's not, I didn't, I mean, I made up, well, a friend of mine made up the word, I popularized it, but it's, it comes from... The, diction the term that is actually in the dictionary, it's um, multipotentiality, which is a term oh, okay. in psychology used yeah. to refer to students who display aptitudes in multiple areas. Um, and then there are some other terms that are kind of similar, like the polymath or um, the scanner, yeah. Barbara Scherer's yeah. term. She says scanners, yes. um, multipassionate, uh, generalist. These are kind of similar ideas. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's awesome. I, I, I've, I've actually heard a lot of people like, you know, Jonathan Milligan, he refers to himself as a, as a scanner, too. And, you know, there's a lot of different, you know, mm -hmm. you know, people who are, you know, have many different passions like that. So that's awesome. I, and I'm one of them. <laughs> so oh, yeah. That's my that's interest, <laughs> interest in this. No, that's great. How did you come up with the idea for the Putty Lake community? And then were you surprised that, we're, that there were quite a few people that sort of resonated with your idea? Um, I came up with it because I'd become interested in entrepreneurship and I read the four hour work week and I was yes. trying to, um, I was doing a course to try and come up with a, a business idea and, and um, so I was just like brainstorming and brainstorming and making all these lists of different things that I could create a business around and none of them, I mean they all sounded like fun but I couldn't imagine just doing one of them. Yeah. Um, and so I kept running into this classic multi potential aid problem and then it, it's sort of meta in a way but I was like, I cannot choose any one of these. What if that were my thing? Like, what if it was about, what if this site, this business was about, this, you know, this community was about not choosing? Yeah. Could I, you know, that's sort of how, I, how I've lived my life. I bet there are other people out there doing this. Yeah. Could I interview people who are doing it successfully? Like, you know, is yeah. this, could this be something? And that's sort of how it started. And, and yeah, I got a pretty great response um, Right off the bat, I mean, it's sort of been kind of a slow and steady climb as I've been growing the community, but um, people, it definitely seemed to resonate with a lot of people. Yes. Well, I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, I, I, I never realized there was, you know, a group of people. I kind of thought I was a weirdo. Honestly. Yeah, I get that all the time. And that was certainly how I felt. And a lot of people email me and they're like, I thought I was just weird. <laughs> But it turns out I'm a multi and there are lots of other people. <laughs> it makes you feel better that there's other people that, you know, like doing many different things too, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, and it's cool because it's a community where everyone is so different. Like the only thing we have in common is that we don't only have one focus in our lives, you know. Yeah. Um, and that makes for, and, and it also means that we, we do have similar challenges. Yes. I mean, you're a multi you need to figure out, like, the productivity side of things. You need to figure out the career side of things. Like yes. it, it, So there are a lot of similarities. But in terms of the specific interests, everyone is all over the place. And that's that's been really fun, just kind of meeting all sorts of interesting people. Oh, yes. Oh, that yeah, no kidding. <laughs> that's awesome. 
uh, when someone has many different interests and stuff, um, uh, you know, maybe they're trying to start something and, uh, but, you know, they have, so they like to write, they like to, you know, maybe they're a painter too. Mm -hmm. And maybe they like music too, and maybe they also like um, I don't know. Maybe they're they ride horses too, yeah. <laughs> and all of this stuff. Are there? Is there like I don't know? Uh, are there steps, maybe, or like just even any tips that would help someone maybe put this under one umbrella, or do you need it under one umbrella? Like if, if you're trying to maybe start be like a creative entrepreneur and start yeah. something, you know, is it kind of good to have an umbrella sort of thing? I don't know, maybe talk about that. <laughs> yeah, sure. So it depends. Um, so I'm writing a book right now on this topic. It's going to be very comprehensive, sort of like the last four years of research and everything, interviews and stuff. Um, and I have come, I've interviewed a lot of people about how they make the multi-potential thing work financially. Yeah. And I've broken it up into these four work models that are often used by, by people. And um, two of them, I think, are applicable here. So. Um, there's the group hug approach, which is where yeah. you smoosh together uh, many of your yeah. interests into, yeah. and you create this umbrella theme, this overarching theme. And that can be, it can either be a job, you can have you yeah. know, a job that's very multifaceted, or you can create a business, what I call a renaissance business, because it involves multiple subjects kind yes. of combined. Yeah. Um, so if you're doing that, then yeah, you want an overarching theme to sort of express like what it is that you're all about, you want because you want it to feel cohesive, right? Even though it's multiple subjects, yeah. so that's one approach. And then there's the slash approach, and that is where you have a few separate and distinct uh, businesses or jobs, mm -hmm. revenue streams, you know. And so in in that situation, you would have separate websites um, for each business, and that might work better if your various things are super different from one another and just harder to combine. Yeah, um, there are pros and cons to both methods. Yeah. Okay, you know, that's, that's, yeah. that's really helpful. I was just, uh, as you were talking, I was just thinking about that. Like, how would, you know, uh, how would a person combine all of that? Okay, so... Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I actually love challenges like that. I do that with my <laughs> students because um, I do a little bit of coaching and it's oh, usually yes. like, here are all of my different weird interests. How can we combine them together and make it make sense? And I, I love doing puzzles, puzzles like that. Oh, it's, that's it's awesome. Fun. Well... You know, then you're the perfect one for doing the coaching because that would be like a real brainstorm session is really what it would be, right? Cause yeah, you, you, I mean that's pretty much what it what my coaching sessions are like. Um, yeah. that's the, they're very collaborative, so yeah. I do much better with students who are like like up for that, and we can just kind of bounce ideas around versus yes. someone who just like sits there and expects me to like you know come up with the business idea for them that's a lot harder for me yes no, well, yeah, I love I love collaboration and brainstorming yeah and if you have more than one person if it's like two or three then <laughs> all the ideas that come are actually amazing yeah you know? yeah so yeah. so that's that's kind of fun <laughs> you know so uh, people who have these many interests is there a way that they could maybe start say they wanted to I don't know maybe they were like an artist or something and but they had they had these other interests you know would would you need to start like how would how would you start with something to start producing an income while still uh you know working on the other stuff or is that i i mean obviously <laughs> obviously a person could you know you could just get a job and, and do right. the art on the side but maybe right. there's another maybe there's other options that we yeah. haven't thought about you know what i mean yeah. Um, okay. So, if we're talking about an artist, there, there. So, the work model that you just mentioned, where you get a job and you do the art on the side, that's what Barbara Share refers to as the good enough job. Oh, okay. And yes. Yes. I, I call it the Einstein approach because um, Albert Einstein had this job um, at the the patent office, and he yes. would just kind of it was is a very kind of slow paced job, and it, it allowed him with you know provided some stability and some money but it also provided him with enough time and creative energy to work on his theories um, yes. on the side right yes. so that is that is one way of doing it yeah. um, works for some people doesn't work so well for others um, another way would be the slash approach like I mentioned so if if your art is one of your slashes and that's just kind of uh, code for revenue stream I guess yeah, um, yeah. 
then you would want to have a couple other distinct slashes, you know, and those maybe are more profitable. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you, if there's a skill that people will pay you for, like a lot of people that I interviewed mm -hmm. worked in corporate and then transitioned to sort of a slash approach and yeah. they would take the skills that they were doing in their corporate job and start freelancing with those. And yeah. just that would be their first slash and then they'd start building other things like a business or start, yeah. you know, performing or something. Yeah. Um, so that's another way to do it. Um, yeah, I'd say that those are probably the best two approaches for someone who is an artist or, you know, is pursuing something that's going to take a little bit of time to yeah. become profitable. Yes. Is to just have, a f like, either one thing on the go that will fund that project or yeah. a few things. Yeah. And then, you know, as your art starts to make you money, you can kind of tone down those other things and readjust and... Yeah, yeah, as you as you get going. No, that's mm -hmm. that's really good. Okay, so um, uh, you know, there's probably people, creative people, uh, and artists who are listening to this interview. Um, you know, that sometimes, like, they may be, uh, not only they might, okay, they might have been labeled that they were indecisive, sort of a, what what you were mentioning, yeah. uh, and have told that they just, you know, they got to stop, you know, always trying all the stuff and just choose one path. So. You know, uh, and, and I think some people, at least some people that I have, you know, talked with on my blog or whatever, and um, it's almost like they feel guilty for having more than one interest. Yeah. So what, what would you say to someone who's kind of going through that? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I would say that, I mean, it's actually, it's actually a wonderful thing, right? Because... Um, there are a lot of skills. So I think that a lot of this comes from like the idea that you're not going to be successful or you're not going, going to make a dent in this yes. world yeah. if you're doing many things because you're splitting your time up. But um, there are a lot of, like a lot of multi-potential aids are extremely successful and they're actually kind of innovators because yeah. um, creativity comes from combining things. Yeah. There's this great Steve Jobs quote about that, about how creative people sometimes feel guilty because their ideas seem to come out of nowhere, but really it comes from <laughs> this um, combination of past experiences and past skills that kind of come together in an unusual way. So you like, you take knowledge from one area and you use it to solve a problem in a totally unrelated field. It's like that's, that's where the new ideas come from. Um, so if you stop looking at yourself like, oh, I have all these random things, they don't seem to contribute in any way or, yeah. or they're a waste of time, um, and we stop looking at it that way and instead look at it like, okay, I did this random, like Steve Jobs, he took yeah. a calligraphy class. He like, snuck into a calligraphy class when he was in college. And that, years later, that became the inspiration for the, um, the, the, the typeface of the Apple computer. Yes, right? I read about that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yes, yeah, so you never know how your past interests and your past pursuits and the different things that you do are going to actually be very useful to you. I mean, when I started Putty Like... I needed, uh, I wanted to register my business, right, and register yeah. my trademark. And because I'd gone to law school, I could kind of figure that out. I didn't, I didn't need to hire a lawyer. And I also needed yeah. a website. Well, I'd done web design in the past, so I could build my own site. I didn't need to hire a web designer. So there are things like that, you know, things from your past can come, to yeah. come together and um, kind of really help you in a very practical way. Um, so I'm not sure if that answers your question, but no, I think that, that the guilt starts to dissipate when you start to accept it and embrace it. Um, also, surrounding yourself with other multi-potentialites is a great way to kind of uh, start being comfortable with it. Yes. No, and that's there is so, so much uh, positive when you're surrounded by a community, I think, right? Yeah. And, um, well, and you, and you just get great advice, too. It's, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, I don't know, it's... There's something about that, I think. <laughs> uh, Definitely. I yeah. mean, we've got, so I, I run the Putty Tribe, which is sort of like our community for people who want to take this stuff a little bit more seriously and really want some support and advice and, you know, some yeah. collaboration. Yeah. And, and it's always really amazing to me to see, like, how how people just flourish, you know, and the things that they accomplish, the things that they, like, yeah. start because they've got this community support and they've got, you know, a group of people who are giving them feedback and kind of encouraging them. Yes. No, and that's really helpful, right? Yeah. No, that's good. Um, so, okay. So, um, now, 
because uh, there's a lot of creative people, writers, artists, yeah. that are listening to this interview. And sometimes we have negative ideas around making money. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what that is exactly. I'm not even sure what that where that comes from. Hmm. You know, because just, I don't know if it's, you know, but maybe you can talk about that a bit. But uh, so how could we look at making money as a, a positive thing instead of like a negative thing? Would you just talk about that? Yeah. So are you talking about making money in general or are you talking about like selling? Cause well, selling, related. selling the stuff that you make. Yeah. Maybe more specifically. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, so, is... you, so you have fun doing it. Oh, mm -hmm. maybe we should just give it away then because we had so right. much fun. <laughs> right. right. But actually, if you want to be able to continue doing the fun stuff, you need to charge for it and be supported because otherwise we're going to starve and that's not going to be good for your art. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is a this is a problem for most people. I think uh, certainly most people like with a conscious like conscience. You know, it's like um, I feel like if you don't have trouble selling, then that's a little I don't know. That, that's weird to me. Yeah, uh, it's something that comes with time and experience. Your, your confidence starts to grow. Um, yeah, I mean, and and as you kind of see the value in what you're creating and what you're putting out there, um, I think you also become more comfortable charging for it. Yeah. Um, but I, it really is a confidence issue, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it, it gets better with time once you do it. Um, but I, you know, money isn't, money doesn't need to be this evil thing, right? Like we all, yeah. it's just one part of life, but yes. we all need it to yeah. survive and to be able to do great things in the world, so... Yeah, no, and that, that's 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 really good, yeah. and and you don't want to undervalue yourself either because then people won't interact with your you know people won't take you as seriously or give your art the respect that it deserves. Yeah, yeah. no, I think that's very true. Um, I was just thinking of uh, um, our daughter is an artist, um, and so she's actually also a musician. So I think she has this multi potential like in her too. But right now she's pursuing art at college and stuff. But you know, um, you know, so she's not comfortable yet with, you know, selling her stuff. Yeah. But I look at what she does and I think, Oh, that's easy. Like $500. Someone will pay for that yeah. because it's so beautiful. Yeah. But you know, which is fine. I mean, she's not there yet, but I'm just, uh, I, I sometimes I, I I guess maybe I just wonder, but I think part I think you're right. I think a lot of it is a confidence thing, right? When yeah. it comes to art and <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just kind of seeing yourself among other artists. Yeah. You know, like I think that when you get out into the professional world and you see that other people are charging for their art, and yeah. this is just like this. These are the kind of the amounts that that are the the standard, the industry standard, whatever. Yes. Um, that helps too. It's like, yeah, it goes goes with the confidence thing, like seeing yourself among those people in that in that yeah. at that level, you know. Yeah. No, I think that's that's very true. That's good. Okay. No, that's that's really good. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, um, so what what advice, uh, you know, would you, uh, looking back? Okay. So we're just gonna sort of dive back. A few years and maybe uh, maybe you can talk about stuff that maybe you would have done different or what you would have done the same um, would you started something earlier just uh, you know because I think it's important that we hear um, sometimes struggles that people had or failures that they learned from and what they learned mm -hmm. so you want to just talk about that a bit sure um, do you mean specifically like in my business things that I wish I'd yeah done? yeah so um Let's see. I, I guess one of the things is, is I wish I had put in some systems early on because okay. I sort of set it up as something that only I could run. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and now I'm starting to, you know, now I've got a bit of a team and I'm starting to outsource things and delegate things more. But it's been more of a challenge because I've had to kind of change the way that I was doing things. Yeah. Um, and also make it, like, you know, create checklists and systems and all these things. Um, and I'm still working on that. And, um, yeah, so if, you, if you're starting a business, you don't want to make yourself stuck within that business. I think it's a good idea to have the mindset that, like, um, you're going to have some people taking over certain things. Uh, I mean, yeah. not the, like, the core creative stuff, like, that I'm always going to do. Um, 
but yeah, like the maintenance sort of stuff. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, trying to think what else. I mean, I certainly could have grown faster than I have grown, but I, I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. Like, I think that there's been a lot of learning and mm-hmm. growth and experimentation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some people, like, launch a blog and they're, like, you know, th- two months later, they're, like, enormous. That's not me and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you're doing fantastic, I think. <laughs> would there be things that maybe that you would avoid? Like, maybe there was something, I don't know, um, just on the journey as you started this blog and kind of got, you know, into, you know, creating stuff. You know, is there stuff that you would have avoided doing if you would have known ahead of time, do you think? Or? Um, not really. The only no. thing I can think of is, like, um, when I'm coaching, sometimes there have been students that or we weren't quite a great fit for each other. And I think yeah. a lot of that is because I wasn't charging enough early on. Um, and so, you know, when you charge a little bit more, then it's only the people who really want to work with you um, and really, you know, really connect with your your message. Yeah. Those are the people that are going to tend to hire you more. If you're charging too little, you'll get a lot more people, but sometimes it won't be a good fit. And um, yeah. I sort of had to do that both financially and also because I didn't have the confidence or experience yet to charge more. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was part of the learning process, too. Yeah. And you no, kind of learn, exactly. like, which students are, are awesome students and which students are not a good fit. And yeah. So I don't, yeah. Yeah. No, and that's, you're right. It's probably just part of the process, right? That you're going to, this mm-hmm. is going to be something that you're going to learn. Yeah. No, that's good. Um, okay. So what, what, what would you say has been your, you know, the most effective things that have helped, you know, your blog, mm-hmm. your tribe, or even you personally as a creative person, what's kind of been your biggest win, would you say? Um, let's see. I mean, launching the Putty Tribe was huge for me. Um, Because I sort of, you know, I was doing this business model where I would like put blog posts out and kind of share my, share my ideas and people would respond, people would email me. So there was lots of interaction between me and my community, like individually. Yes. There wasn't much going on between the people in my community. And I just kept thinking like, we are this community full of like really creative, really resourceful people who've been through a lot, who have a lot of different interests we could really be helping each other like I'm not I don't want to position myself as this guru you know I don't want to have all the answers I don't have all the answers um, but there's a lot of wisdom in our community so when I decided to launch the putty tribe um, that that was a game changer for me too I also felt like at that point in my business like oh I don't know if I should be launching a <coughs> site like mm-hmm. it's a lot of I don't know if I'm big enough if my site is big enough yet but um, <coughs> There was a lot of interest, and people were super into it, and uh, it's just a really great group, and I love to see multi-potentialites helping each other. Yeah. So that was a big thing for me. Yeah, yeah. well, and, you know, because I've been lurking on your website for a, for a while now, I just, I can see how people are connecting, and I just think that's terrific. I mean, you know, what better way yeah. to learn than, you know, chatting about, you know, your passions with each other and brainstorming together. I think that's, <clears throat> you know, that's pretty neat. Just as you've been, you know, developing as a multi-potentialite, mm-hmm. maybe there is a book or a piece of advice someone gave you that really, you know, inspired you and, uh, you know, caused you to, you know, maybe believe more in yourself. Uh, would, would you share that? Sort of. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Barbara Sher's book is fantastic. On the, it's on this exact subject. It's uh, Refuse to Choose. Yeah. Um, so that really helped validate. I mean, I sort of already came up with the idea for Putty, like, and then I found her, and I was sort of like, oh, someone else is already doing this, but we're very different, so it's fine. Um, and then I read her book, and I was like, this is really great stuff. Yeah. Um, so, so that is a fantastic book for kind of just validating your multi-potentiality. Yeah. That's things. really good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also, I'm a big fan of Chris Gillibo. Yes. I really, um, yeah. his first book... Uh, the Art of Nonconformity, that had a big impact on my life yeah. at that time, for sure. Yeah, no, that's an excellent book, too. I, I mean, it's just neat uh, what we can learn from all these other people that have gone before us, right? Yeah. And uh, just learn from their wisdom and their mistakes and what they've learned, you know. Sure. So it's both ways, yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, 
uh, we're coming kind of down to the finale, but what, what, uh, what motivates you to do the many different things you do? <laughs> What's your big why? Do you have a big, oh, yeah. a big, big why? why? Um, I think I have a few <laughs> big whys, um, but one of them is definitely that um, I like to help, I, I like to take something that has kind of a negative connotation mm -hmm. and flip it around and yeah. make it a positive thing. Yeah. Um, and I, I, and help people, help other people, like sort of embrace their weirdness and yeah. their uniqueness. <laughs> it's, um, I have, I had this great teacher in law school. She's sort of a friend and mentor to me now. And she uh, once told me, so, um, I was in a little team and we'd come up with this business idea for this, this music policy class. And okay. uh, we were going to pitch it in this entrepreneurial competition at the school. And so we, we went into her office and we were practicing our pitch. And she, afterwards she was like, you know, your idea is really kind of different from what the judges are going to see. Like it's a little bit more weird. Like, <laughs> but don't hide that. Yeah. Feature it. Yeah. That's so, great. Yeah, yeah I, I just, I take that advice with, to everything that I do, and I, I feel like that's sort of part of my, you know, my big why or my o personal overarching theme is just kind of, like, embracing the weird, embracing and featuring the weird things mm -hmm. about you and helping other people do that, because yeah. I think that that is where a lot of um, really profound, amazing work comes out of, it comes out of that that space, that like weird thing that you tried to hide or suppress as a teenager. <laughs> yeah, no, I can actually really see that that would be true. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's great. And that's really good that you had a teacher that sort of saw that, right? And yeah. encouraged you in that. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I mean, we, I just feel like, you know, we've learned so much about what it is to be a multi potentialite and you've kind of t taken away the excuses and the uh, you know, sort of those feelings of, you know, we've given us a new perspective, right, on feeling guilty about that we have more than one interest, <laughs> that sort of thing. So that's great. Um, so what what are your future plans or projects? You had mentioned a book. Uh, so yes. That are, that's um, coming up. I'm working on a book. Yeah. So the book is, I finished the first draft a couple months ago, so I'm doing oh. revisions now. Yes. Um, which are pretty grueling. Um, but yeah, that's going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to be, um, looking for, I'm going to do the, the traditional publishing thing with this one. And oh, I'm going to okay. try and find an agent and a book deal and everything. Cause I, I just want to spread the message as far and wide as possible. So, so that's in the works. Um, uh, on the personal side of things, I've got a few projects. So I'm yeah. actually in the pro, I just bought, um, a vintage trailer. Like a, it's a bowler trailer. Um, I just bought it up in Canada, drove it back down to Portland, and I'm going to be living in that, uh, sort of doing the kind of, um, you know, the simplicity minimalist thing, I love guess. Love that. Love that. That's awesome. Yeah, it'll be interesting because, I, you know, I've got all these different activities and projects and all these, like, little, you know, paraphernalia, like my, my guitar and, like, like, paintbrushes and stuff. And, and it's like I need to sort of figure out how I'm going to deal with all the little things that I get that are associated with my interests and, and also like live in a small space. But yeah. I sort of feel like um, living simply with few objects is going to help clear up my mental space and, and help me pursue more things. That's just a guess. So I'm, I'm sort of exploring these issues now. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to be taking a, a six month long trip in my trailer and exploring the Northwest. I'll be doing that in the new year sometime. Um, it's, I'm calling it my Northwest quest. So <laughs> That's awesome. You gonna yeah. write, you gonna write about it in your blog? Too? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, um, woodworking. Just generally, like becoming more interested in like getting back to nature and becoming self sufficient and like using my body more. Um, you know, building things in the physical realm as opposed to ideas, which I've done a lot of. Yes. Um, so that's sort of the direction that I'm moving in these days. <laughs> oh, that's terrific. Love yeah. that. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> Boy, I just I feel like going on a trip now too. <laughs> um, so, uh, and probably everybody listening does too. Actually, <laughs> um, so what what would be the best place to connect with you online? Well, puttylike dot com is just p u t t y l i k e dot com, mm -hmm. and I'm you know I'm on Twitter and Facebook and all of that. But yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. 
Well, Emily, I just uh, thank you so much for just all your great insights, and I just I just think it's helped people so much to sort of get a handle on, well, you know, what it is to li like to live with more than one passion. I just think it's really going to help people. So, oh, thank you. Thanks yeah. so much for having me. This was really fun.